thank you so much everyone uh, who's joining and uh, is who has joined and is still joining um, and a very warm welcome um, to social media tips tricks and tales from Europeana's expert great to see you here this morning so the goals from today's session, I also realised I didn't introduce myself, which was uh, a bit of a remiss, but uh, my name is George Evans and I'm Editorial Officer at the Europeana Foundation. Um, and I'm hosting this session today, um, although I'll be introducing our brilliant speakers in a moment. Um, so what are the goals for this session that you've joined today? So uh, this session is part of a larger series that marketing, communications and editorial colleagues at the Europeana Foundation have been running, um, aiming to build your confidence in communications and editorial. We've been running it in close collaboration with the Europeana Communicators Community, who's a Europeana Network Association community um, dedicated to all things communications and digital cultural heritage. And um, we've been running these together. So in this session today, so you know what you're going to get out of it, we have three goals. Um, the first is that after it, you will have uh, improved confidence in using social media for professional purposes. Um, that you will understand more about how to create content for social media for professional purposes and that you will understand some approaches and practices um, and reflections to moderating social media for professional purposes. So that's really uh, what we hope that you will get out of this, uh, this session today. Um, as I said, although I am your host today, I am not actually going to be speaking and presenting. Um, I'm really pleased to introduce my colleagues to do that. Um, firstly, Alexander Strelihovska, who's my fantastic colleague at the Europeana Foundation. Um, Alex is Senior Online Marketing Specialist. Uh, she manages Europeana's social media, and you uh, may also know her as the organiser of the Gip It Up Competition and Digital Storytelling Festival. Um, Alex Hi. has massive expertise across um, all aspects of managing social media, and she will be sharing um, some of them with you today, which you can see on the board. Um, and then a little bit later, we'll also be hearing uh, from Mariana Marcucci, who uh, is a digital media curator, and there she's waving. Uh, Mariana founded Invasioni Digitali, uh, Digital Invasions in Italy in 2013, which uh, promotes the value of and engagement with local cultural heritage. Um, and Mariana also supports cultural heritage institutions in working offline with online, offline and online communities, um, and also has uh, vast expertise across uh, kind of uh, established and new social media channels as well. Um, and Mariana is also on the European Network Association Management Board and Communicators Community Steering Group. So she's very familiar with all things Europeana as well. And uh, today, Alex and Mariana will be uh, sharing knowledge, running some activities and doing a Q&A with you as well. So I hope you really enjoy the session. If you need any support, please message my colleague Beth Daly throughout. And with further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to Alex for the first part of this session. Um, so Alex, please take it away. Hi everyone, um, thanks for joining. I hope you are all well this morning, you are sitting comfortably and you are ready for some learning, but for uh, some practicing as well. Um, there will be practical exercises, so depending on your preferred way of working, uh, you can either open a tab with some kind of document, um, take a notebook, or get like a browser-based um, note um, taking app or tool. You, if you are up for it, you might be also uh, sharing and scheduling things on your own social media. So if this is something uh, you'd like to do, be prepared to log in and we'll see where it will bring us. Uh, we can start with the first slide, Georgia. So different ways of using social media. This is something that might seem very obvious, but actually a lot of people are confused and rightfully so. Here is a little classification. And I would like you to put in the chat numbers of these different types of users uh, that you think uh, have place in your life. So put just, if you use on behalf of an organization, put one, if for personal use, put two, professionally, put three, if you are a lurker, put four. Although if you are a lurker, uh, I don't expect you to put because maybe you are also lurking in this webinar. If not, thanks for uh, being open. So yeah, I see some answers coming. Uh, all one, two, three. So you are right. It can differ from one network to another. It can shift over time if your interest changes or if you, for example, get a job where you want to raise your professional profile. If you are 
bored with the um, platform, you maybe stop posting on it. Or if your friends are gone from it, I think Facebook, maybe you also uh, will post less. Um, so yeah, these are like those four uses that we'll discuss a little bit more in detail, just to, to kind of go deeper and give you a little bit of pinpoints on how to look at it and how to think about it when you are posting yourself. George, up this next slide. So on behalf of an organization company, so uh, this is probably should be to read to uh, help achieving the broader goals of the organization. It means that the message, the social media transmits, the engagement it creates is part of a bigger picture of the comms marketing, but also goals of the organization. So it doesn't have to be, but it's useful to use profiles and accounts and at businesses. So Facebook would have a business account. Twitter is a bit of a different story these days, but previously you could also could have a business account. Um, like this, you have access to analytics, you have access to ads and paid services, and you also have collaboration opportunities which now, especially within the meta suite, so uh, suite, so uh, Instagram, Facebook are quite strongly reinforced. So they kind of want you to be transparent about the collaboration. So a business account is a way to have a little bit of insight in what you are doing, how is it performing, and have a little bit more information that will again help the broader goals of your organization in terms of communication and marketing and also contact with the audiences. So for people to know that is a that is a brand organization account, it should be aligned with the branding and identity of the organization. So using the logo, uh, having the text that is aligned with the things um, that you say on your website. Um, also a link, if there is a link space. And you should try to keep a tone of voice which is aligned. It doesn't have to be identical because it, it can be adjusted to how the specific network works, but it has to be aligned so that um, the audiences will recognize you from the social media in you from the website. And if there is an account run by an organization, it should be clear and easy to identify that this is the case. So as I said, all these elements should be in place. Like those people who come across your account, either through search, either the seat on, in the feed and click, they know, hey, this is an organization. It does this and that. I am interested or I'm not. Can I have the next slide, Georgia? So personal and professional, I put it on one slide because there are multiple ways of doing it, um, depending on who you are, which platform you are using. And it can be also one quite fluid. You can do both things within the very same account on different types, or you can, or you can have one account for only professional, one only for private, a little bit mixed. You all probably figure out that LinkedIn is a very professionally featured social network. So you are almost obliged to put um, uh, professional information there, although you occasionally will see something else. With the others, it's uh, more mixed and it's a bit of your choice. To um, give you the idea, so uh, personally is to keep in touch with friends, uh, family and to share your thoughts. So some examples, posting a holiday picture, sharing a cat meme, doing a TikTok dance just for fun. So usually it will be spontaneous. You will not have a calendar for your personal updates. Um, and it reinforces the personal connection. So um, it's the connection with people you know, um, 
maybe having like an occasion to have a little conversation, making people smile, making people laugh, um, get giving an update on uh, what you're up to. This would be the goal. Professionally, uh, I would say it will be to promote one's work and you can do it all the time, but you can do it occasionally. For example, if you are live tweeting from a conference, this is a professional use, even if at other times you are using the account for uh, something else. Uh, another example is sharing an achievement. So if you think um, you won a prize, you had a promotion, you got a nice um, uh, something to share, um, then it would be the case. Similarly, if you got into a nice partnership or collaboration, um, this could be also a professional use. So this is more curated. It doesn't have to be very thoroughly planned, but I would say think what you are posting because the way you formulate um, your update uh, kind of uh, gives a different result and can make it better or worse. Um, it encourages and reinforces professional connection and it's a way of gaining visibility within an industry or can be also more, more private by center of interest within a certain theme. And as I said, um, you can do it in multiple ways. It's a bit of uh, your choice, uh, depending also on the network you use. Uh, but if you think about your career, your contacts, uh, it's nice to, to give it a thought. Uh, what uh, is the way, the best way to communicate it? And if you maybe see that, for example, all your feed is about something professional or around one theme, uh, starting a new account could be also a way to do it for some networks. Can I have the next slide? So lurking, uh, let's talk about it. Uh, it's not posting on updates, not interacting, but watching, reading and being up to date with what others are doing. And a lot of people do it. So it's important to keep in mind that when you are posting something as a professional, but also as an organization, there will be people that you reach, that they read, but you will have no trace for it. I'll come back for to a little trace that uh, you might see actually in the insights later. Um, but uh, there are different um, reasons people are uh, lurking in the private um, context. It can be a jealous ex that just wants to see but doesn't want to see a trace. In a professional context, it can be a curious competitor that maybe wants to get inspired by your ideas, but doesn't want to see a trace again. And in like a global um, point of view, it can be someone who is concerned about online privacy and doesn't want to leave a trace online. And one other thing to keep in mind. So in the world, not everyone is very outspoken, extrovert, and always uh, into talking, in kind of broadcasting their thoughts. This is reflected in the, the online world. Not everyone has energy and mental space um, to update, and this is okay. And similarly, because of the amount of the social networks that exist, not everyone can be always in a creator mode. And you can love watching TikTok videos, but you don't have five hours to learn the routine, and this is okay. Uh, can I have the next slide? So if you are on social media as a professional, so you, but represented for your job of area of activity, uh, what is nice to do? It's nice to have a good bio. So uh, use keywords that um, help people and identify your industry niche organization. If you have a website or portfolio link it and if you wish to increase your chance of being seen use tags so when posting about collaborator tag that is that account and find hashtags to uh, find and interact with relevant content so they can be very broad but they can also be very niche but 
if you see a tag that is recurring and there is an active community around it and if you want to interact with it it's uh, quite smart to save it somewhere for yourself but also on instagram for example you can follow and similarly on twitter so that you receive updates about this hashtag from different people and like this you also see who is interacting around this specific hashtag and take advantage of global events celebrations and trends not all of them but the ones that seem relevant to you again to increase your chance to be seen but also to see people who maybe are interested in for you can i have the next slide so try it out so we have a activity for you um it's fictional but could be real because we really give editorial grant so um like take a look at the site uh, later on but uh, the exercise is as follows uh, you received an editorial grant and wrote a guest blog about women's history for european uh, um, write a social media update for the platform of your choice so it can be on twitter it can be on insta it can be insta stories uh announcing this so uh, you can do it in documents somewhere on site um if you want to do like a real thing, you can use the social network and save in drafts. Um, choose whether you are writing as an individual or an organization. Uh, tag relevant accounts, so uh, probably European, but maybe there are other ones as well. And use at least one suitable hashtag. Uh, if you are in doubt about it, ask in the chat. Um, if you're happy with this result, share it in the chat. You don't have to, it's mainly for you to learn, but if something you wrote you find is fun and others could read it, share it. And if you have an actual example of this type of post, so you guest wrote something for European, now you spoke at our conference, uh, share it in the chat. And we have five minutes for this activity as uh, Beth uh, will tell you in the chat. Let's go. And here to um, give you a little inspiration, um, I put a professional and individual example, kind of annoying, uh, announcing a collaboration. So uh, you'll see one on the left, it's a retweet and it's um, in Catalan because the audience of this account is actually Catalan. And by Michael Culture, you'll see that they kind of announce the project and then they make a recap of various things they have done. And here, individual professional, our own Adrian, uh, about the blog he wrote. So um, there is a visual to make it attractive, relevant, hashtags, link. And we are also tagged so that we as European account could share it as well, the fact that he uh, shared it. So a deeper dive into content creation with some practical tips about um, content. So uh, can I have the next slide? So when you are posting, uh, make sure that your post um, matches the features of the social network. So think about the length of the text. So for some of them, Twitter, you have a character limit. Yeah, easy. But even if there is not, uh, try to see how much of text is visible in the feed, because sometimes it will be just two lines. And it's very important to have something interesting in those two lines. Um, about type and dimensions of the visuals. So whether it's an image or a video, what is the size, uh, whether um, it's like a portrait does has to be full screen or not. And um, when you have visuals and there is an alt text, uh, please fill it uh, like this. Uh, you make sure that all kinds of people can access your uh, update, which is great. Uh, 
make sure you are allowed to use the images that we are you are using. So it means they are public domain or openly licensed and things about links and calls to action. So firstly, whether you can link, otherwise it's better to say link in bio and put a clickable link somewhere rather than a very long link that we cannot really click on. And calls to action that can be, of course, to go to your website, but they can be also something else. Share, comment, um, leave an emoji. Can I have the next slide? And to find out whether your posts are doing well. So um, one thing to know, you are always fighting. Uh, if you have a small account, you are fighting to gain new followers. If you have a big one, uh, the organic reach is so limited and small these days. It's only a couple of percent um, of your followers that you are actually fighting of the attention of your own followers. Uh, so in order to increase it, you should be always testing frequency and format and always be able to test again and again. So I wish I could give you a golden recipe for it, but a couple of months ago, for example, Instagram was video. Now there has been an update announced that a photo is kind of coming back because this is what community wanted. And at the moment, each type of followers will get whatever they prefer according to their own interaction. So I would uh, say test. Uh, a personal kind of uh, Europeana experience because what we have are actually high quality images and we can write nice descriptions for them. It seems that the carousel is the best format for us at the moment, but it can change in months. And um, take various forms of engagement into account while measuring success. So uh, it's not only about links, it's link clicks. If you use, for example, the link sticker or a link in your post, it's about shares. Also comments, answers um, in like this little um, answer, question answer uh, sticker on Insta, for example. And people we see like sending direct messages are important because it means they really care to write a sentence for you. Probably they have some deeper interest. So go to your inbox and answer uh, a tip. Um, if people don't follow you, but share your content and send you a DM, it will be in this other request together with spam. Check it out occasionally because there can be uh, important and interesting stuff in them. And safe. So we are talking about lurking. So safe is a way for someone to have the, this post somewhere um, to uh, go back to it in, in the future. Um, but it's not visible to anyone except for a business or a creator account as a number. And if you have suddenly a piece of content with a lot of um, saves, uh, I would investigate it because it means people want to go back to it for some reason. And there can be also a potential for reuse, for example, this is something that they discover, maybe when they want to do something else with it later. So this is something to keep in mind, saves are really nice. Next slide, please. So help each other. So uh, social media are social. So as I said before, participate in all kinds of events. I'm repeating it because it's quite important. Um, if you have kind of social media contacts, friends, partnerships, um, think about takeovers, tag, guest posts, nominate if there are like um, trends around the nominating. It, it keeps the, the community alive and it's a kind of fun and a playful way to, to exchange and give access to new followers and uh, people who would interact. And start a pod. So this is a group of accounts are uh, committed to help each other. And this is something that we'll actually try doing. Uh, can I have the next slide? Try it out. So join the pod. This is a big experiment because usually it's like, yeah, join the pod, but where are those people? I don't know how to organize it. So now we are here with uh, 40 people uh, who came for the same thing. So. Let's uh, give it a try on social media platforms um, that you use. Send a DM 
to so direct message to Europeana with the word pod in it. Um, you can do it now, you can do it a little bit later, but um, try to be quick. And uh, we'll create groups on each platform where we get a couple of answers and you will be able to interact and help each other there as well as keep in touch. We'll do a little intro round once they are ready. So this is the first thing, message DM with the bot. It can be on Twitter, it can be on Instagram, it can be on Facebook, let's see about that. Um, and the other part of the task uh, is to explore women's history on either Europeana, if you are more into content, uh, stories, history, cultural heritage, or Europeana Pro, if you would like to see those things from more professional and contemporary point of view. Uh, choose a blog or news post and create a social media post. Um, so make sure, again, you use an image with it, uh, an image that you are allowed to use. Uh, find and use suitable hashtags, tag relevant accounts, and you can type it in chat if you want, if you are proud of your message, uh, but also save it as a draft or schedule for the date in near future, so around Women's History Month. And when the post is live, Number one, you join the poll. Uh, so you you can go there and say, hey, I am uh, this and this person, leave a short introduction and share your post. And the task for everyone it will be to share, like, and interact with each other. Let's see how it goes. Okay, hey, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who's been sharing their thoughts in the chat and prepping uh, their Women's History Month the uh, tweets and posts. Um, and also exploring the content on Europeana and uh, Europeana Pro as well. Um, so we'll just give you a minute to wrap up this activity. And then we're just going to go to the last part of Alex's presentation as well. OK, so. Oh, sorry. No, we're not, because actually we have a final announcement related to the section for which I will hand uh, back over to Alex to talk about as well. Yeah, so, so this is just a homework. You are not required to do it now, but since we have the pod, since we are chatting, you might be up for it. So um, each year during Women's History Month, we offer our Instagram stories to different profiles, organizations who want to post about women's history. And this year we are opening this opportunity to you as well. So um, it's an occasion to work on a real social media update that will be published on our account. You will uh, receive a template explaining how to do it, how to create stories, what is the content, how is the text, how to put links. Everything is in there. It's one page. You need between half an hour and one hour to go through it and make it happen. Um, the workflow will be the same as with the partner institutions. So you will receive feedback. Your drafts will be uh, revised, questions answered. So there are no worries about the quality of your outputs. Uh, we are here to learn and we are here to uh, promote women's contribution to history and society. So start where you are and it will get you to a publishable uh, level and of course if you need for you know um, your documentation cv your institutions uh, reporting um, you want to have copy of your stories you will receive them or will download them for you the way they looked online together with stats and if you are up for it um, i think you will receive this deck with all the info but uh, send an email to my email uh, with the title uh, WHM, so Women's History Month 2023, Instra Stories Takeover. Uh, really stick to this uh, subject line because then I will see it quickly and uh, we can move forward. And we'll take it from there and hopefully you are up for it and we'll uh, publish your piece during Women's History Month on our Insta. Let's continue. 
Okay, so for this final uh, section, uh, I'm just uh, chipping into her because Alex has been doing an amazing job speaking through all of these. Um, we all know that social media can be an absolute joy and fantastic way to connect with people and share things all in the way that um, that we've just been exploring. But there can also, as we know, be challenges associated with it. Um, so in this final section that Alex is giving before we hand over to uh, Mariana, we're just going to explore a bit the joys and pains of, uh, of moderating social media as well. So yeah, back to you, Alex. Yay, let's do it. So if you are moderating social media and uh, having an, organ, an account of an organization, and especially if you want to promote and shed light on topics related to diversity and inclusion, you will receive negative reaction. You cannot avoid it. Uh, you need to get your skin thick. And uh, you need to learn to deal with it. This is the part of the workflow. And sometimes negative comments are legit. This is great. This means people are paying attention to what you are doing. They think about it. They read it with understanding. And this kind of um, constructive critique is a way for you to learn and improve. And also sometimes if you are doing things a little bit quickly automatically to say like hey this is important stuff it's for people i have to think about it so own and fix the error if possible um say sorry and thank the person for pointing the issue out so i'm sharing here a recent mistake by myself so that you you know you are not ashamed if you also make a mistake once because you will um so um we had this post about a uh, two men and women uh men and women uh, uh people collaborating but i did the copy paste mishap and put only the names the name of the man in the post and it was horrible but i was in a hurry and there was a person on the internet who read the article and pointed it out and I was very grateful that uh, she only not took the effort to read the post, read the article, but also tell about that. And as you see, the whole situation finished with a compliment about the article. I fixed the issue for the future people who saw the post. Everything ended well. So this happens. And if you make a mistake, don't freeze. Uh, we are human. Uh, we are on the keyboards, devices, and there is a lot of information. It can happen that you omit something, that you paste a link that will not work or brings you elsewhere. Be grateful for people who pay attention. I always am because I'm happy that someone actually reads with understanding what I'm posting. If you, we can switch the slide to less uh, nice examples. So sometimes comments are not fun at all. They are not to be constructive. They are not to bring any value. They are just hate speech. Um, I will not read those examples, but I, I pasted them here. So you kind of see the level of seriousness of that and that sometimes they are very, very long. So if it happens to you and during Women's History Month, Black History Month, Pride, it really happens a lot that you are aware and you are prepared because this is internet. Some people are there for information, searching for nice stuff, learning. Other people are for uh, kind of freely expressing their uh, bad opinions like this without consequences. So one thing to keep in mind, be aware that your reaction and possible action or answer um, are related to who you are and your own experience in life. So when unsure, uh, try to discuss it with your colleagues, uh, find a second pair of eyes uh, to take a look uh, because it's normal that depending on who you are, you will react differently, but when in doubt, consult is really useful. Um, a few personal tips and experiences Mariana will tell you later about creative ways of addressing hate, which are very interesting. But for kind of a daily management, uh, these are a few things that you learn. So 
pay attention where your time and effort go. So is it towards people who are haters and trying to pacify them, responding and this kind of stuff, or towards support of reactions which are positive, useful, constructive, um, bring new information, new perspective. So if you have time to leave a reaction to take an action, think about that. If you are like, hmm, maybe blocking, hiding is not democratic or, uh, you know, it's a problem for the freedom of speech. Think about the victims and how they would feel in this situation. Because if you hide, if you block person, they cannot interact. If you hide, it will be only visible for them and their friends. Which is okay if they need it, can be. But it does, it maybe helps with uh, limiting spreading of more hate messages because once it starts, it kind of continues because copy paste is very clear. So sometimes a hateful comment starts a discussion. So if people are actually discussing, monitor it, but see if the community is reacting, it's also good for them to actually tell them of their opinion, defend and to show the, um, the, the, the haters th that they are not right without you as an account uh, doing it. And if you are posting something that is new, that is less known, again, related to um, communities who, which are less represented within our society, uh, you can get a lot of this type of comments. So be prepared to take time for going through them and come back because when I was preparing this and checked our post from a couple of years ago, I saw that new comments came and it's very difficult to stop. Uh, next slide. I think with that, we have uh, reached the end of your slides as well. So um, I just want to say a huge thank you so much to Alex uh, for that wealth of information that was shared there. Um, as Beth has just put in the chat, we're going to have time to have a Q&A at the end. So if you've kind of got any questions about what Alex said or any comments um, uh, that, um, oh, I've had my screen share sharing disabled, um, that uh, we will have time for that. But I'm now delighted to hand over to Mariana, who is sharing her screen as well, which is why that just switched, um, who is going to kind of continue to reflect on what Alex uh, was uh, discussing about how we interact with each other on the internet and how we can do that and share some examples also of how cultural and heritage institutions have been uh, have been creative in doing that as well. Um, so I'm delighted to hand over to Mariana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Georgia. I just, you know, quickly. <laughs> I have only two, 10 minutes, so I have to be, I have to be very quick. So I, you know, um, I'm a tough. Um, yeah, so uh, I just want to um, show you some, um, as cases of at least some things that I uh, consider very interesting when speaking of social media and cultural organization working with social media. Uh, the first thing that I want to highlight is that social media are, yes, virtual spaces, but where we share and where real people share. So just keep in mind these always. And we share obviously our experiences. The interesting part of the last time is that we are not watching movies or like watching series on Netflix. We are watching people, experiences and watching series and uh, movies. So a big trend nowadays is like watching people, watching other people, like reactions and rage clips are very popular among the youngsters. Like on the right, you can see uh, at the beginning of a, like a rage <laughs> experience of a gamer who has just lost his game. Uh, and obviously, as also Alexandra said, eight is uh, unfortunately a big part of uh, today's experiences on the web. And uh, yes, women won the competition. We are the most hated target of uh, eight speech online. Um, why this is happened, we are still trying to understand. But um, like fighting for rights is always uh, a really um, our thing to do, and some people are not ready to embrace 
uh, equality. And uh, the percentage of negative comments is always higher than the, uh, the percentage of positive comments, like for women. I highlighted that because it, I think it's very important approaching the women history month. So we just keep that in mind when creating all your, all your posts, we have to fight for equality. So what can we do to improve online communication? I have, a, <clears throat> I have some example that I want you to, uh, that I want to share with you. But I want to like start from the manifesto of Parallestili is a project I'm collaborating with and I'm proud of it. Uh, it's non-hostile communication. It's a manifesto of 10 points. And I want to start from the first two, virtual is real. On the internet, I only write or say what I would dare to say in person. And the second one is you are what you communicate. The words I choose define who I am and they represent me. So every time we work, uh, on the internet, on the web, with our post, just remember that our post is us. So I want to show you some examples. This comes from a, a night school in Italy, in Bologna. Uh, they, uh, the task was to create something about Pompeii, like a tour of Pompeii to highlight the beauties uh, of Pompeii. And uh, they have created a virtual tour of Pompeii made by some celebrities. Obviously, they have chosen some celebrities, national and international, mostly Italian and international, like Pope Francis and Greta. And they have thought, what would they have like written about Pompeii if they were you know, visiting Pompeii? So like, for example, Chiara Ferrani would have wrote like wonderful experiences, Stefano Spolonica in Pompeii, Special thanks to our guides because obviously she is working with our Instagram, so some sponsorship also there. But Greta, Greta, what would have said? Like, oh, uh, obviously she's interested in like uh, sustainability and green, so she would have said it was very interesting to know at the, that at the time the water was controlled so, the, so that it was not wasted. Or Pope Francis, thanks to the guide of the Temple of Apollo, who helped me expand my knowledge in the religious field. So, it, you know, we can like, um, we can uh, learn from the influencers. Uh, and another example is um, from some students, but probably some food for thoughts for you, for your organization or for yourself. Like um, how if we like try to write some bios for, for example, Francesco Petrarca, the poet uh, Petrarca uh, trying to do some personal branding on Instagram as a poet. So maybe uh, as soon as this this uh, webinar finishes, you can try to like write a blog post, um, um, a personal bio for uh, one character that you like or woman character. Why not? Because the women in three month is uh, approaching. And for example, another one, the bio of Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice is doing personal branding on Instagram as an influencer, it was like as a tour guide because she's guiding uh, Dante in the Divine Comedies um, heaven. So let's try to think, you know, not just as we are, but like as our organization's characters or maybe like um, influencers. This is an example, uh, for example, for uh, the Etruscans. So they have created the bio of Instagram for like the Etruscans and obviously highlighting all the um, things that they were doing, like intense industrial activities, commercial activities. They loved women. So viva le donne means in Italian, uh, we love women. And obviously no to the Greeks because we know, you know, the history. And a project that is a, like um, project of these days, they have just launched this one, is a chatbot from the archaeological park of the Colosseum in Rome. Uh, after 25 days of trial, let's say, they have gained some very useful insights. So the chatbot is not just to give information to people, but also to collect information and data for the organizations. Because after 25 days, they have um, they now know that 69% nearly of the users ask information for tickets, for timetables, 
and like only 2% of people ask to speak to a human being. So what they know is that like people are comfortable with um, technology. Another beautiful project is for, from the um, Archaeological Museum in Naples. Father and Son is a video game. Actually, this is a poster from the first edition, but they just are uh, creating the second edition of the video games with like millions of downloads. It's beautiful. Um, and the, 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 the history of the video game started and finishes in the museum. So it's a very, uh, it's a beautiful example of connection from like archeological things and technology and the future. This one is from the TikTok of the Galleria degli Uffizi in Florence. Uh, they are using, I like suggest you to watch TikTok uh, for, to watch their, um, their posts because they are very interesting and they really um, like, nailed the way to connect the museum to the young people and they are like doing a really a great job and actually the percentage of young people visiting the museums um, is increased and last but not least um, I want to like show you two different ways of addressing a speech one more let's say traditional and the other one more creative like the first one is from the Holocaust Museum in Houston um, uh, they have created few happenings to confront people and to, to talk with people and to speak with people, to speak with people, to help them confront hate speech. Obviously for them is like, again, um, Jews, the, yeah, Jews. Um, so this is a, like, let's say more traditional, but it's beautiful because they are sharing on social media all the results of the, of all the talks. And the last one, is from Chiara Ferragni. She has received, she has a lot of haters. She's very popular, so it's pretty, let's say, obvious. And uh, she decided to sue all the hateful comments on a dress she wore uh, on the first night of the Sanremo uh, musical contest in Italy. Um, so she decided to speak up against state speech during a very popular event in Italy. And I think that influencer has to do that. Organ popular organization has to do that. We have to speak up. We have to uh, inhabit the web. I want you to live with that because um, my father was used to say to me, like, uh, to behave at home as if I were out and vice versa. So I would say we have not just to leave the web, but inhabit it like it was like like if it was uh, our home and our house. So I think I nailed the time and the 10 minutes. <laughs> and thank you, for, uh, thank you for listening. Georgia, I did it. Oh, thank you so much, Mariana. That was that was a wonderful uh, whirlwind tour, and um, and really, no, really fantastic to see kind of more examples to inspire you, and also to kind of think through together some different ways. Of, um, of managing hate speech, which uh, unfortunately we have to do. So let me go back to my screen because we uh, are at, as you can see, a section where we have some time for some questions and comments. So I want to uh, open the floor to the audience. If you have any questions that you would like to uh, ask Alex or Mariana um, based on the presentations today or for some more tips and tricks, as we've said, um, please feel free to, to unmute yourself or ask it. You're also free to ask in um, the chat as well and um, I'm actually going to stop screen sharing um, so that we can see everyone in case you want to as well. Um, I well just to give you a bit of time to, to gather your thoughts and um, and start to think of questions which again please just uh, raise your hand or add into the chat. Um, I wanted to ask Alex and Mariana um, what you yourselves had planned for Women's History Month if you have any plans and if you'd like to share them um, as well. Do you mean social media wise? Yes. <laughs> so uh, I have a, a little um, private quest. So um, our target now is to reach more multilingual audiences. And we have some blogs in English which are about women uh, who are Polish and written originally by Polish people. So I'll be translating them and we'll be making 
uh, updates in Polish as well, so uh, Polish people can access them in the mother tongue. So this is one thing. The other thing is, of course, the social media takeover by different institutions. We are having a very nice crowd from Stockholm to Zambia this year. It's always a lot of fun to do it and to meet new people and to see how many initiatives are actually there that you can introduce to new people, but also learn uh, yourself and kind of be aware of not only during this month, but also throughout the year. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm actually um, <clears throat> managing a project for capacity building for young women. And uh, we plan to um, connect all these, the, the stories of the young women nowadays uh, in especially in India and Iraq to like the um, stories of their ancestors, the women ancestors before. So we plan to like post few few things connecting the Europeanas content to to nowadays women um, jobs and works and yeah and yeah so, that sounds amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, that sounds like a fantastic project. Yeah, I'm like very proud of it actually. <laughs> oh well, uh, please put a link in the chat or anything if, if there's anything you'd sure. like. To well, yeah. We have also had a question in the chat that I will pose to you. Um, do you have any specific trick tips on how to promote cultural heritage on social media as it is not a product that people can buy? What would be your tip to make it more interesting to a wide audience? So how can we how can we promote cultural heritage when it's not a not a product? Okay, if, if I may, yeah. Um, yeah, that's like, I think the, the, the question, um, all, we ask all the way ourselves when promoting like the cultural heritage, because we, we think that following some trends like on social media or, you know, on the web would like in some ways, uh, like keep out some interesting things or important to the cultural heritage. But I think that the first thing that we have to do is to analyze our target audience. And then if we have like uh, above 65 years old or uh, below 18, uh, it would be very different in terms of social media posts and everything. So the first suggestion for me is like analyze and uh, understand your audience when you have done it if you have like want to attract a, um, a younger audience like for example the Uffizi you have to understand the way they communicate you know so maybe like creating some content after having like um, done some lurking on like TikTok or the social media they use not just I have to attract you know young people and um let's do some videos on TikTok because you you will see the difference like in terms of people who are following you or likes as soon as you adapt your content to the web and not the opposite that's I know it's it's a very tricky thing and in some ways it's very difficult to do because we have to modify modify ourselves you know modify the cultural content to to post it online and i know that it's like our you know sons and daughters and everything so i don't want to modify anything <laughs> yeah but um it's very important to identify the target audience before anything yeah i think that's a, that's a really important takeaway and uh yeah very very much uh comes across as well alex is there anything you'd add to that yeah, I wanted to say that it is a very, very legit question about the product because um, it's like spaces, organizations who are based on values have to function on the platform with kind of a commercial push. So this is natural that it can be difficult um, to do it. A tip from me that works is to actually start by asking people what they like um try to get their opinion so often on stories for example we 
do a little quiz with just like two or three questions, very simple, low threshold. Either um, two, three uh, answers to choose from or just a simple word. And then in this way, we try to get people curious. And then we share uh, a number of other stories, for example, or a link to an article to show that what we don't have is a product, but is knowledge, uh, is beauty when it's art. Mm. And it's also a connection between their world and the history and the heritage, which is from the whole Europe. So I think different ways of asking people about their preference, about their interests. For example, a fun thing we did this December was a Christmas culture heritage gift guide. So, of course, I don't have any objects to, to give, but we ask people about three facts about a person and we found an item for them within cultural collections mm -hmm. and it wasn't real but we said we cannot give it to you but you can go to see it in a museum with that person mm -hmm. so uh there is a way to play around this uh commercial and non-commercial aspect and it's trying, uh, it's testing, but being close to audience, I think this is something that works. Yeah, amazing. I uh, I always remember as well, on I think on Black Friday, there was a Europeana tweet that says, you can always access all of our lovely content for free and look at it as well. So that's uh, that's fantastic. Um, we have another question. Thank you very much for everyone who's posting in the chat. Um, do you have any tips on how to engage the whole team in participating in social media um, posts? So this is, uh, I'm helping with the social media of the cultural heritage institution I'm working at. How can we get more, more of my colleagues and team members involved? Oh, I have that. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, ask a lot of questions. Ask them what they like. So not just, we have to do some posts uh just write a post just ask them what they like especially if they have like different like ages you know so like um ask them what they think the trends are so and especially ask them what they like what do you like to do like for example they they like i don't like videos i like more you know posts or anything so assign the tasks uh, based on what they like, what they like to do. And um, it's amazing. I have done this with, um, you know, some of my colleagues in another organization and it went like awesomely good. Like uh, each of them have prepared like few posts and they were like amazing. Even something that I wouldn't have dared to post, but like they did and it was like uh, really amazing. People like to do what they like. It's like as simple as that. <laughs> That's a great tip. Thank you. Um, because we've had we've had a few questions coming thick and fast in the chat, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to carry on going with those. Um, so we have had another question, and uh, from my colleague Adina, and I I think this is to the whole everyone participating as well. Um, and the question is: Are there cultural heritage influences out there? And what would it mean for an institution to reach out for that to them, for example, to engage with them in collaborations, benefit from that influence to promote specific content? So I guess this is a question for anyone who might consider themselves a, a cultural heritage influencer or um, Alex and Marianne, I don't know if you have anything to say about kind of uh, how, uh, you know, if you've worked with uh, with kind of partnerships that have helped to promote specific content and how that's worked as well. So there are uh, influences are, are in all the disciplines. So you, of course, have people who are already visiting all the museums and uh, this is how they kind of build a reputation and a big followership. Uh, this is something that we are uh, currently investigating about uh, specific content for us. Currently, it was more easy maybe to have it within give it up but uh certainly it's a big opportunity so this is something that i would like to investigate more in the near future great thank you so much um mariana is there anything you'd like to add 
Oh, sorry. No, I, <laughs> no because I, we just um, switched things. Um, yeah, if you, uh, there, yeah, obviously there are a lot of uh, influencers and um, especially of different kinds of influencer. And if you just look, just uh, I have a, like a, a small analysis, um, look at them, look at what they post. If you like it, you can just write to them and try to find a way to collaborate. But um, yeah, I think this is like a sort of after, like things to do before mm -hmm. you have to find your tone of voice, you have to find, you know, the things that you want to highlight and then find one because even them are differentiated in ages. Like you have like the one who speak to the youngster, other one to other, like for example, the, um, Chiara Ferragni went to the Fitzy Museum for, for a shooting for Vogue and they have been criticized a lot for inviting Chiara Ferragni, but she was not invited by the museum. So it's a bit tricky when, you know, working with influencer, we have to be prepared for, for you know, for everything. <laughs> Thank you. And um, and thank you so much to everyone uh, who's who's asked questions. And I'm sorry that we couldn't get to all of them. Um, but we now have to move on to the final uh, part of today's um, workshop. Um, obviously, you have us now all on social media. So also, please feel free to uh, to share them with to continue sharing them with us and with each other as well. And there's been some really nice examples um, shared in the chat as well. So um, what we would like to do now is take you to a mentee, because obviously there's been a lot of information shared today, lots of tips and tricks. Um, and we want to give you the opportunity to see um, how, um, how, how well you've remembered maybe some of the ones at the beginning. So I will be sharing my screen. And um, which I hope you can see Menti. Yes. Can you see Menti on my screen? Yeah, great. Um, so if you go to menti.com and put in the code 38139859, um, you will be able to participate in this. My colleague Beth has also put the link in the chat, um, which you should be able to go to as well. Um, and uh, I just want to check with my colleagues that it's all working as expected. Alex? Yes, it is, because I can see answers coming up. Fantastic. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. So the first question that we want to ask uh, goes back to the beginning of Alex's talk. And we'd ask you to put in, how can you increase your chance of being seen on social media? So what kind of things can you do? Yep. And uh, the examples are all coming up. So we've seen you can add hashtags to your posts if you know this one that's popular. Be aware of the latest trends. Tagging other institutions. Yep, that's really important. Depends on which social. Yeah, that's a really good point as well. You know, that it may be uh, what works and one might not work on the other. Regular posting images. That was a big one as well. Engaging with the audience. These are brilliant. Keep them coming. Good bio. Yep, we also saw that in Mariana's talk as well. Fantastic. Hashtags, regular posting, consistency. Yep, maybe if you're organisational, as Alex said, the importance of, uh, of your tone of voice as well. Analyze the results and prepare to change. Yep. We're always learning. There's always new trends. Fantastic. Interactive stories with comments. Short and sweet. Yes, I think uh, I think some social media posts uh, really support that. Um, I'm just going to give one more minute just because uh, I can see there are currently 19 people in the Menti and 36 in our workshop. So I just want to make sure that everyone's been able to get in. And if you haven't, please do um, please do ask in the chat as well. But it's just looking great. Yep, global events and celebrations, connecting with important regional and national events. Ask your audience. Yeah, I think we really heard this in the in the last Q and A as well of how uh, how that can be a, a lovely way to increase your reach as well. Brilliant. Okay, thank you so much, to everyone who's being able to contribute. And yeah, if you're having any problems, please uh, please do ask for help in the chat. The next question that we have is oh, more coming. What is a pod? Is it a group of accounts who like and interact with each other's posts? Is it an agreement that you have with another organization to retweet each other? Or is it a group of whales who follow each other on Instagram? I really felt the, the presentation lacked whale related content until now, you know. 
we can see a <laughs> I so wish it were the whales yeah um but yeah I think what we... what is me by the way <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> it, was too, it was too funny not to <laughs> <laughs> thank you oh well someone agrees with you as well mariana so yes no but um but jokes aside i think yes we can see that it's um a group of accounts who like and interact with each other's posts and one that thanks to uh thanks to alex's amazing presentation we have formed as a result of this workshop so thank you so much to everyone who's messaged also i could see some discussion in the chat about the best way to be able to message european if you're having problems so if you are maybe have a look as well there was some advice in there and as our I hope, final question, uh, what today have we learned? What are some ways of dealing with or moderating hate speech on social media? We heard some approaches from Alex. We heard approaches from Mariana and discussion of this. What, what approaches could you take when doing this? Yeah, block and hiding, absolutely. Yeah, it's not personal, as, as Alex said, when you moderate, you have to kind of uh, take that as part of your role as well. Don't feed the trolls. Take time for your well-being. Yeah, I think that is a really, a really important one as well. Yeah, also that, um, that in some cases it's an opportunity for learning. Thanks for mentioning and it could be a way to solve something. A second opinion. Yeah, that's really important, especially if this is something that can take its toll on you to work with colleagues and get their support. Report. Yep. Yeah cordially respond yep um in the uh in the example that alex gave i think that was a, a great great way to confront you don't always need to block and hide so yeah you can but it can also be the start of an of a discussion it's fantastic i'll give a give another minute to to let them come thank you for sharing as well Yep, understand a point of view and it's still just hate speech, hide or block, yep. Confront hate speech, yep, we saw uh, again some of uh, the example that Mariana gave at the end is, uh, is definitely an example of that, stay cool. Speak up, yep. Lovely. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, always emphasise the good, correct aspects of the issue discussions in a friendly manner. Yeah, where that's uh, where that's possible, that's a great thing to do. Lovely. Thank you so much for participating in the Menti in this workshop. Um, it will stay open so you can continue to add your ideas as well. But for the moment, I'm just going to stop sharing the Menti and go back to our slideshow. where sorry it is coming where the uh the last thing to do is just to say thank you thank you all so much for joining for your questions and your participation it was such a pleasure to have you and i also of course want to say a massive thank you uh to our speakers alex and mariana for, for taking the time and for sharing their expertise um it was been a great session um and also to beth and tamara who have been running behind the scenes as well um, so there's nothing left than to wish you uh, a lovely day. Please look out for the info on our next workshops because we do have more coming in this series where we're kind of a yeah, building communications and marketing conference, confidence even. Um, and I would also invite you to join the Europeana Network Association. Um, we have an entire community dedicated uh, to communicators, people who communicate about cultural heritage um, for professional or personal interest. Um, and we can share more tips uh, like this and join join like minded professionals as well. Um, and there'll be a link in the chat about that. So uh, thank you so much for your time. And I wish you a great day and Alex and Mariana as well.